Hey guys, um, this is a piece that I have just finished. Uh, this is a commission and um, I posted a photo of this on Facebook the other day. I think it was the um, Alcohol Ink Technique group, I believe. And um, the response was, was overwhelming actually. And some people asked if I had taped this for YouTube. And no, I actually haven't, but luckily this is a two piece commission. So I'm gonna be doing a second piece very similar to this one. Um, so if you want to see how I'm going to make that, just stay tuned. So starting on this second piece, I'm going to start by just putting down a little of that black uh, Copic and I'm just going to dry it. This is going to be sort of the center of my piece. I like um, just, it, it sort of helps a little to know um, where you want the center to be. I'm going to do three phase like I did on the first piece and this is going to be sort of the center of that. Um, I'm going to put down some eyes, so I'm going to add a little more, uh, just one tiny little drop, because I do want this to fade out into sort of a lighter gray. Um, and this is sort of one of my favorite techniques, picking up the paper with a little bit of ink and a little bit of ISO and just moving it around. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and it is so much fun. This really, I mean, it, if you're new to this, it is tricky and uh, yeah, I forgot to shake the brass, always shake the brass. Um, if you're new to this, it is a bit tricky and you have to start out by only using a tiny bit of ISO, otherwise it will run away from you. Um, and you can always add a little more, but this is basically a technique I use very often when I, when I do these fades. Um, need a little practice, but once you sort of get the hang of it, it is so much fun because you can control this in a way that you can't if you're only moving your inks by using your hair dryer. Um, and well, I am using my hair dryer now, but when I start out tilting it around on the paper, I can create the shape that I want the fade to be in. And you can see I moved the inks around a little bit with the with the hair dryer, but I'm not really changing the shape of it because there there's not too much ink and ISO on there, so it won't move too far. Um, so just I I love doing this. I love watching that ink and ISO just slowly move around on the paper. Um, I have a couple of videos. Um, well, one of them is, is how to do something really simple. I think it's called five tips on how to do less is more. And I got another one showing you different ways of doing these fades. I'm going to, I'm going to put the links up for you on those videos at the end of this uh, video. Um, I'm just removing a little bit of ink because it moved a little in a direction I didn't want it to. I'm just using a paper towel for this, but if you have sort of um, just one tiny little thing you want to remove and you're scared of ruining what you already have on the paper. Just use um, a Q-tip. Those are really good for sort of moving, removing tiny little, uh, tiny little spots. Um, so I'm going to get started on the second fade now and I'm going to put the ink down a bit away from the center. Um, this will make it easier for me to not end up having the fades blend in too much. Um, this way I can move it around and then slowly start moving my way in towards the center. Um, if you start sort of right in the middle, your fades will just blend in. I mean, it depends on how, how close you want them to be, but I want mine to be just a little bit separated. Um, and you can see here, I'm just, I'm blending in it a bit and then start working my way in towards the middle. So I sort of have a little gap, which I like. I'm only gonna do three fades on this. This is gonna be very sort of simple and, and minimalistic. So start a bit a bit away from, from the center. It will really help you control how, how close you want them to be. Now I got a little too much black in this, so I'm just removing a bit, because I could sort of see this was gonna end up a lot darker than the first fade. I don't want them to be exactly the same, but this was gonna end up very black and the first one was a lot more gray, so. And again, just 
tilting it around until I get the shape that I want. Um, how much ISO you're going to use. You need to practice a little. There's no right or wrong. And here I'm just cheating a little bit because it ended up a little bigger than I thought. So I'm cheating, wiping the ink off. But you just have to practice a little with how much ISO you need when you're doing this. Um, start out with just a tiny bit and then you can add more as you start moving it around. If you put down too much ISO at first, you can't control it at all. It will just it will just run away from you. So a tiny bit and then add some more. Now with commission pieces, I always get sort of a little nervous. Um, just does my, will my client enjoy what it is that I, that I did? I've shown my client these two pieces and um, luckily she absolutely loved it and she was very, very happy with the results. So, but um, commissions are so much fun to do. They can be tricky though, because when when I have someone who wants me to do a painting and then they explain to me what they want it to look like. But what happens, and this is sort of very understandable, you know exactly what it is you want and you can see it inside your head, but you, you sometimes forget to sort of explain the small details. Um, so that is what why commissions can be a little tricky to do sometimes. I love doing them, but I have learned throughout the years to ask a lot of questions. Um, you know, someone wants me to do a painting and they want it to be blue. And they know exactly what kind of blue they want, but they don't really, they sort of don't explain to me what the blue is. And and I have to ask, what what is the blue that you want? Because there are like, I can show you 50 different shades of blue. The blue can be a little greenish blue, it can be a little gray, it can be light, it can be dark, it could be more turquoise, you know, they're like, your client knows exactly what kind of blue, but I don't, I need, I need specifics, you know, so that, that's just a tip for you. If you're going to start doing commissions, remember to always ask all about all the details that your client doesn't really know how to explain because they can just see it in their head. So ask questions. You know, if your client wants a lot of gold, well, what is a lot of gold to you? I know what it is to me, but it might be different to you what a lot means. So that's just a little tip for you. Ask a lot of questions. Get as many details as you possibly can, and that will make it so much easier for you to make something that they want, that they like. Um, and end up with with a with a good result and a happy and a happy client. So I'm almost done with my third fade, and um, I am very very happy with this. This is one of my favorite things to do. I love doing these fades, um, and I love doing stuff that is sort of very simple and minimalistic with a lot of white space. This is some of the things that I that I did when I first started out, and it's I still love it today. I sometimes go a little color crazy, but I do really, really enjoy the simple pieces. I think like this, there's not a lot of ink on. It's black and gold, but it's sort of a little bit elegant. Um, I'm just adding a little bit more of that black color in the center. I want a, a little bit of a little bit more um, contrast. So I'm just putting a little, a few drops down and then spreading it out a bit with a brush. I am going to cover up a tiny bit of the brass. Um, I, I don't like really, really big spots of brass. I want, I want to break it up a little bit more. So, and making it a bit darker in the center makes it sort of look more alive. You know, it, it makes it look more, uh, what's the word? It is more wavy and, and wispy. And um, so I do that a lot. Add, add a little dark color in the center of your piece when I'm doing something like this. Um, it just gives it so much more. The more different, there's only one color in this. The more different shades I can make, the more exciting it looks, I think. So um, this commission is is done, I think, two pieces. Um, my client really likes them. She's very happy, which makes me very happy. 
And most important of all, I had a lot of fun doing these. Um, very simple, but I think elegant pieces. They just need to dry a little bit and um, I'm gonna varnish them, put them in some nice frames, and then they're ready to go off um, to live in their new home. I'm just going to show you both pieces um, next to each other so that you can see them. Um, I think they're going to go in like um, a, a newly renovated kitchen up on a white wall, which is going to look really good, I hope. So this is the one I just did. And here is the first one that I did that you didn't get to see on camera. So you can see they're very similar, but not exactly the same, but they go really well together, I think. I'm just going to pop some mats on so you can sort of see the finished result. Um, the two videos I talked about earlier are going to pop up on your screen in a little bit, how to keep something really simple, and um, the other one with a few different techniques um, on how to do fades. So check those out if you want to try doing something like this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, I will be back again soon with some more stuff.